Hello everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you how to install a Bluetooth kit to your Audi. Now, this tutorial is going to work for the A4, A5, A6 and Q7 of these years. So if you're watching this video, the chances are that you're A, an owner of an older Audi and B, you want to retrofit it with a Bluetooth kit as your car most likely didn't come with one. And even if it did, the factory kit doesn't let you stream music, only take calls. In that case, you have three options to choose from. Let's explore each one in depth. Option number one, an FM transmitter. This simple device retails for around 10 euro. It simply plugs into your cigarette lighter socket and acts like a mini radio station, streaming radio waves to your stereo. Pros, very cheap, very easy to install, can be transferred onto any other car. Cons, sound quality is rubbish, especially in cities with cluttered radio waves and lots of other drivers blasting their music on these tiny FM transmitters. Option number two, Bluetooth dongle for the AMI or Audi music interface. Now, these Bluetooth receivers will plug in to the AMI in your Audi's glove box and stream sound through aux option of your MMI. Pros, it's a much more integrated and permanent solution, despite being very easy to install. Looks clean and tucks away out of sight. Sound quality is much better and it's quite cheap, only about 10 euros. Cons, this option only applies if your Audi has the AMI installed. If not, the actual MMI unit can set you back another one to 200 euros. As well as that, the system cannot be used for hands-free only music streaming. And finally, option number three, the fully integrated fiber optics based Bluetooth kit. Yeah. This is the real deal. This fits into your glove box and connects to the existing CD changer. Pros, well, first of all, the sound quality is unmatched as this system sends uncompressed audio via the fiber optic loop. And it sends all of this straight to the amplifier. This being the only system to be fully integrated into the MMI lets you use the buttons on the console or steering wheel to control your music. It also supports hands-free calling and features most functions you normally expect, such as a contacts list, missed calls, etc. Cons, apart from taking a little more work to install, the obvious drawback is this is the most expensive option out of all three, costing anywhere from 200 to 450 euros depending on the package and supplier. There are a few companies who supply such kits, namely Fiscon, Kufa Tech, and Mr. 12V, among others. Now, mind you, I'm not sponsored by any of these. That's because I took some time to browse eBay, Amazon, Gumtree, Craigslist, or whatever the most popular website in your country is, and I picked this one up for 90 euros, which is one-fifth of its original price. With all that being said, let's go and get this installed. All right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is remove the glove box. And in order to do that, it's held in by five screws. There are two underneath the glove box and three on the right, middle and left side. And to make the job easier, just go ahead and slide the seat as far back as you can. Get your eight millimeter socket and let's remove those five bolts. Just before we remove the last of those bolts, just make sure to pop this side fuse box cover. All right, so here is our kit and we always want to fasten it in a secure way. In my case, there are strips of Velcro, which means you can stick it on. Then we also have to plug in the power cable and the optic fiber cable back into our original CD changer. And that's where the existing wiring harness is going to plug in once we put the glove box back in there. I think I might actually just relocate it here just to be out of the way. Now with that done, just before we put everything back together again, we have to run the microphone. And we're going to use the dome light to mount the microphone because there's a special place right here for the factory microphone to sit. And in order to do that, to remove the plastics, they're just held in by metal clips. So we're just going to pop them out. And then afterwards, the main unit is held in by two Phillips screws.
All right, now that we have the microphone jack and the footwell, I think we are ready to put the glove box back in. And just before we replace the glove box, don't forget to plug in the glove box. Wiring harness, the microphone, the fiber optics, and finally, the power supply. Now that the glove box is fitted, the next step would be to program the MMI into recognizing the Bluetooth module. Now, if you don't have the cable, don't worry, you can visit your local Audi or VW specialist, they'd be happy to do it for you, or simply borrow a cable from your mechanic friend. So first of all, put the key into the ignition. Then you need to go to address 07. After that, 10, adaptation, go to channel number 12, and the value needs to be changed from 0 to 2. And this is basically going to tell the MMI that there is a telephone with Bluetooth installed in the system. And that's all of the coding that you need to do. Now, if we select telephone, as you can see, the telephone function is enabled, but it's not connected. Now next, we're just going to take our phone and pair it with the MMI. And once that's done, as you can see, there's a telephone, there's the carrier information, the signal strength and all of that good stuff. And as you can see, I can access my phone book and so on. However, that's just the mobile phone function. In order for us to activate the Bluetooth streaming, we need to enter the following code, 258. 224-001. Go ahead and dial. Now, what's going to happen is the call is simply going to dial and say the number is not valid. Please try again later. The call is going to drop. But then afterwards, if you go into media, as you can see, CD number 12 is telephone control. And here we have all of our controls for music and as well as that pressing mode on the steering wheel once brings up the telephone menu where we can scroll we can dial a phone number pressing it again brings up the music control menu where we can pause and um, start select the next previous song and so on So guys, this is going to conclude our video for today. I really do hope that it was useful to you and that you've enjoyed watching it and that this is going to help you to install Bluetooth in your own Audi. In any case, that is it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll do my best to answer them. This is Adam G and have a good one.